The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Esavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. So we're going to have as our guest at the half hour, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. He's had this market pretty much pegged. We've got the Federal Reserve today and tomorrow going to be quite active, but uh, we have some patterns that are lining up that uh, should uh, hold up, I, I think, rather well. You can see the first one here is the German DAX that's been selling off uh, quite a bit. If we take a look at the FTSE, uh, you're going to be seeing pretty much uh, the same thing uh, in the FTSE. And all I got to do is to find it. I just saw it. Where was it? Come on. Here it is. Just one second. There we go. Get this up here. These are still in downtrends, but not nearly as bad as we're seeing here in our market. But this is the FTSE. As you can see, it's holding up relatively well. Folks, even though the Federal Reserve is out there today, that's not the important thing that's happening in the world. It's a European uh, Union uh, had an emergency meeting this week, yesterday, to, and today to talk about what's happening with the Italian bond market and the German bond market. They are exploding to the upside, folks, and the interest rates are going very, very high, making the bonds you know, total wipeout. I mean, it's just a debacle what's going on. They're worse than what we're seeing here. Uh, this is what they're trying to do is to figure out. The problem is all the bullets are gone, folks. They have very little that they can do because it's out of control. We have inflation that is not only a cost push inflation, it's also a demand pull inflation. So we have both of those working against us at this time. And that's why we're seeing these things, you know, going absolutely crazy. Now, I wanted to talk to you just about how I look at some of these markets so that when we see them, that we can give a rough idea of where we think they're, where we think they're going to go. Now, if you notice here, I'm going to put up the chart here of the E-mini S&P that we've been watching here for uh, quite some time. Get this up here, and we'll get up here to let you see it. Uh, you'll notice here since Sunday night, we've had these 382 retracements. And so, of course, what we're looking at today is nothing more that same type of a 382 retracement. That's what we're that's what we're basically looking for. And if we take a look at this, we'll get this up here so you'll be able to see it. Uh, okay, I know this is repetition for a lot of you, but by golly, we've got a repetition is the mother of knowledge. And the father of invention, hold on one second here. You'll see here, there's the 382. We hit it, almost hit it exactly again this morning. Just missed it by a little bit. The Dow Jones Industrials hit it exactly. So that's a very important number. And the fact that it's bottoming like this. The other thing that is uh, really important, and we talk about this when we do the Floor Traders Handbook, when we're in these really key times like we are right now, we always watch the standard deviation. So I'm going to bring this up and you'll see standard deviation, as you can see on the Dow Jones, was right there. Now, the reason why this is important, I've talked about this a couple times. One of the questions was posed to me today, why am I looking for a potential 2,000 point drop in the Dow Jones in this next leg down? And the reason is the largest drop we've had in the Dow so far has been 1,200 points. If you multiply that times 1.618, that gets you out to just a tad over 1,900. So I roughed it off to 2,000. That's what happened in 1987. It happened again when we were in the COVID part. Because if you take that biggest swing down, and then when you get the last swing down, which is going to be the one that's going to hurt a lot of people, that's the one that you want to be watching. Because when we get that 1.618 one, that's when you get the really quick snapback rally where the market goes back a lot more than anybody think uh, think that it can so i know a lot of the folks have been watching the s p today and they took it but it wasn't just the s p folks let's just go back for a second here and take a look at the uh, i want to get the gold up so we can take a look at it um this is the gold here now remember gold was trading we had three three major signals here in gold over the last few days but i just want to 
just re- review, folks, because nothing nothing really changes in these markets. They go up, down, sideways. They repeat. And you can see here we had the 382 retracement here. We had another 382 retracement here. And so when we were on the air on the on the air yesterday, I was talking about another one that was probably going to be coming up. And I'll bring this up to you right here, and you'll get up here to take a quick look at it. We were watching the gold to come down, rally up to the 382 at 17 18. 38. That was what we were expecting it to do. Now, you notice last night we were quite a bit lower. We started to roll over. And so what you do when you see something like that, what you have to do is you've got to go in and adjust your 382 retracement to get a hold of what you think it's going to do. And then you'll see this is what we did. And uh, we'll bring this up here. I sent this out real early in the evening last night saying to sort of expect this uh, 382 to come in here on the gold at 18.38 and the high was, uh, we missed it, it was 18.38.50 uh, and now we're trading at 18.21. Uh, now the same thing occurred in the crude oil market and the reason why we were watching crude oil boys and girls is because it had a beautiful retracement here and we'll get this up here, all three of them were pretty much spot on. Let's get this last one here. I think I'll give you my two cents worth on this. You probably, if you pay more than two cents, you overpaid. But here's what I: the only way they can help us, help the the people out there, and, and they don't really give a rat's patootie on on what we do or anything yet. No way, they don't care. But the market will tell us. Now we had that big high up here. You see, that was a 78 percent retracement on the daily from the 130. We got to 123. We broke down. We made the 382 retracement right there at 1931. The high was 1951. We're now trading at 1754. So it's got a $2,000 profit in it. When you add 2,000, it's 1,800 in gold, 2,000 in the uh, in the uh, crude oil, and then uh, we we have it. The, the S&P we're just short. I mean, we're going to stay short because it's going a lot lower. That did nothing to do there. We're just waiting to see the rally. So we've got the gold, the crude oil. And what was the third one, Larry? Son of a gun. I can't remember, but I'll figure it out in just a minute. I'll get this up here to let you folks see. I wanted to point it out to you. Uh, this one was very important because here is the same thing in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. There is the, uh, you'll see the 382 retracement coming in exactly. So those are the ones that were, well, oh, here the third one was, uh, I've got it right here, boys and girls. Stay with me, and we will have it up here for just a second, and with a little bit of luck anyway. Uh-oh, maybe we need more than luck. I'll cover that here. Um, well, I want to try to get this last one in so we can get it. Here it is right here. Just one second. Here is the third one, which was uh, the natural gas. Uh, if you remember yesterday, we talked about the natural gas. I'll, uh, I, I said I did this in a, in a video, but I did not. All I did was I posted it, but it came out so late. But here's the 382 retracement coming in here at uh, uh, 7, uh, 770. The high was 769.80. Uh, it is now uh, $1,700 uh, to the good. So sometimes the 382s work, sometimes they don't. We'll be right back, boys and girls. Stay with us, please. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, folks, it's Nick Charts from our good friend J.C. Parrots of All Star Charts, and he's showing you how difficult it is for stocks to rally when you have a really, really super strong dollar, and that's causing gold to take a you know hiatus to the downside, and then also you'll see uh, you know what it does you know to the E mini S and P. So uh, let's just pay close attention to that because these are big breakouts that we're having. If you'll remember, folks, yesterday we talked about the weakness that we were seeing in the euro. And uh, if you remember, I, I mentioned on here, I said, try to sell the first 382 retracement or sell the first ABCD pattern that you see in the euro. And if you was watching it today, uh, we just missed the 382 by about 20 pips. But as you can see here, we had an absolutely beautiful ABCD going right up. Uh, to the high there and it's broken you know well over uh, twelve hundred dollars with virtually no heat at all so you can't do all of these trades of course but uh, all four of the ones that we're looking at today uh, were working pretty nicely and basically all it was folks is just a little bit of a b c d and then we do a little bit of razzle dazzle with the 382 the greatest number ever invented by mr leonardo da pisa the fibonacci I'll tell you, folks, it's really amazing. By the way, we have a new member of the Tiger uh, family, folks. Uh, we have a good uh, little boy was born two days ago uh, up in uh, Vancouver, and his name is Leonardo. And he is a TFNN listener at the age of three days. His mother and son are doing quite well, and the father is doing extremely well. And he actually named him after Leonardo da Pisa, the Fibonacci. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. There's been a bunch of those through the years. And I, I think it's really great, uh, you know, it's a, point, a way to look at things anyway, uh, a little bit differently. Now, here's something we need to talk about, folks. I wanted to show you this pattern here because this is really important. One of the reasons why, you know, I, I enjoy doing this show is we have so many smart people out there that send me ideas that are just absolutely off the wall. I said, where in the heck did you get this? And I go back and test it, and I say, shut the front door and raise the rent. Been looking at these for years, and I still miss it. But take a look at this, folks. If you'll notice here, up here at the top here, when we were at the 78% level at 123, we had the breakdown in one day. We dropped $7,000, okay? 
seven thousand dollars. We rally back three, which is at the three eight two retracement right there. You can see it. And then last night, you'll notice that the market came down and touched the three eight two retracement again at one eighteen fifty, and we rallied up all the way up to one uh, nineteen fifty five or something like that. And then when we took this out, folks, when we took this out, that's when hell hath no fury like a crude market in descent. Because once it broke, it broke all the way down here to the 116 and change level. Folks, this is the good part about these patterns is when they work, they work extremely well. And when they're wrong, you get out of the way. Figure you're going to be right about two out of three times, and you're going to make two and a half to three times your money on each one of these. Sometimes you'll do better, sometimes you'll do worse, but you'll have the odds in your favor. And therein lies the rub. You've got to have that because that gives you, you know, the real the real advantage of, uh, you know, what you want to be looking at. Now, let's get back to the gold market here because this is what we're watching here in the gold. And I think this is what we're going to be. It could reverse here with the Federal Reserve, just like anything. And the markets are very overbought, or excuse me, oversold. But look at this. We had a 382 retracement here in the gold up here at this 1873. Okay? High was 1870. Uh, no, the number was 1878. The high was 1883 Sunday night. And we've broken uh, almost 80 handles to the downside. We got to 1805. But we're looking below 1700 as a potential in other words taking the low out of uh, you know a year ago and that would be nothing more than a giant a b c is back here where we had this uh high up here at this double top and then down into this level right here right around 1700 that's what our goal happens to be in this now the only thing that'll change this is if we get above 1870 we get above 1870 you know it's 60 handles from where we are right now but uh, by golly, it could happen. We saw it on Friday. The market moved 100 handles. And uh, Sunday night, what did it do? It was up $2 and then rolled over and went all the way back down, taking out the lows. So there's a lot of things going on. The Federal Reserve is between a rock and a hard place, boys and girls. There's not much they can do. And the reason why, the, the difference is, folks, we are closer to a low in the treasury bonds than we are in a high. We are, we're, we've we almost made, you know, the objectives that we've been watching here. Let me get this, uh, let me get this up here so we can, uh, so we can see it because I, I had it all printed out, ready to go. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. And yeah, that's not the one, that's natural gas. Give me a second, folks. I think it's this one. Nope, it isn't that one. It might be it's this one. There it is. This is the one I want to show you. Here we go. Been, this is why we've been bearish bonds for a very, very long time. Remember, we just uh, don't look at fundamentals at all, folks. Up here, of course, was uh, the greatest scam. This was worse than the crypto market, folks, when they told us about negative interest rates. At least crypto, you had some type of a, uh, a chance to make some money, whereas with the, this one here, they said, you give us the money. We're not going to guarantee that we can give it back to you. And it's going to cost you money for us to hold you the money. Hello, operator. Here was the big move here, folks. This is the weekly, a perfect 135 pattern when the bonds are at 160, folks. They've dropped 30 handles. We're only a couple handles away from the big ABCD pattern down in here at 128. Now, I imagine you're going to see some really wild stuff happen here over this next uh, day or two because they're going to be throwing all kinds of things at the markets in Europe uh, through the European Union and also our folks here at the Federal Reserve. They're going to do uh, they're going to do some job owning. They're going to do everything they can. My opinion is the only way that they can really acquiesce to people and they don't really care whether they help us or not. But if they would just open up the, the vaults there where we have all that excess oil and let the let the miner, let the uh, pump, what do they call it, the oil drillers come back. I know that's, uh, you know, green green piece and stuff. But, folks, if you can't eat and you can't heat your house like many people can't. It don't make any difference, you know, where the gas is coming from or where it's going. You're going to die anywhere. So if you, we do need that oil to get going right now. I know it's wonderful to have, uh, you know, cars that you can't hear coming down the road. But by golly, we're just not right ready for that yet. We have we're en we're energy independent, folks. We don't need to get oil from anybody. You know, hey, look, just a few weeks ago we were two dollars and a half cheaper than we are now. 
So let's, uh, let's think about that. Maybe the boys will do something about that. That's what I'm seeing when I look at the chart of the crude oil, gasoline, and, and the gasoline, which has been the leader, only made a 382 retracement also. Guess what heating oil did? Duh, 382. All three of them made 382 retracements, and they're coming off a bit. That might be the first sign. It might be the last time, but we'll have to wait and see. Just to show you, we'll get back to the gold for just a second here. We've got uh, Jeff coming up here in just a minute. If you'll take a look at this, this is the chart of that gold again, uh, also coming from uh, – one of the folks that belongs with JC's group, the All-Star Charts. We're sitting right here, folks, at 18.05. I mean, anything, we had a 382 today at 18.38. Below that, it's bad news. We'll be right back, folks. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights as our guest today. Jeff, how are you doing today? I am well, Larry. How are you today? I am good. Well, today is the day that the referees make their decision. What do you think is going to happen with the Federal Reserve today, my friend? Well, with about 95% probability, I think we're going to see a 75 basis point uh, hike. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will affect the markets very much? You know, um, it's really tough to say. I think that we're going to see a lot of volatility but, you know, I don't think it's so much what we're really going to do today. I think it's what's mm -hmm. going to happen going forward. And I think it's going to have a lot to do with what their guidance is uh, around July and September. And, you know, uh, we're already seeing a lot of indications that um, we could see follow through 75 basis point moves next month 
and in the September meeting as well. Okay, now your first chart is about inflation may not be peaking. Well, with demand pull and cost push, it's uh, going to be pretty tough for inflation to, to back off a little bit. What, what are you feeling here, Jeff? You know, this is the Atlanta Fed's uh, dashboard on inflation, and they look at nine different studies where they calculate core inflation, not headline inflation. So if we just back mm -hmm. out the cost of food and energy uh, prices moving up, we're actually continuing to see an uptick in core inflation. It moved up from about 287 basis points to 337 basis points uh, based on the last uh, report. And that tells me that we're going to have more persistent inflation and that the Fed is going to need to be much more aggressive. Yeah, they got. How are they going to be aggressive? They're just going to have to keep printing money, is all I can figure, because no one wants to buy bonds. I mean, there's a absolute debacle going over in Germany and also in Italy this last two days, and that's why they've had a special EU uh, meeting going on because the bond markets have collapsed over there, even worse than, than what we've had here. So it's just a worldwide uh, problem with bonds. It looks like. Well, you're guaranteed to lose money. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's no good. How about the monetary policy, Jeff? You've got a neat uh, graph here on monetary policy. So we're really looking at the CME Group's uh, FedWatch tool here. And I took a look mm -hmm. out to July and September just to get a sense of what the Fed funds futures curve is pricing in right now. And while mm -hmm. I think uh, it's, you know, it's a lock that we're going to get a 75 basis point move today, the Fed funds are already locking in 75 basis points at the next meeting. So, um, you know, I think 150 is pretty much guaranteed. And that gets us to 2.5% by the middle of next month. Uh, on the Fed funds uh, rate. And, and that, to me, is something to be concerned about because, you know, that's that's going to suck the life out of the economy, basically. And yeah. September's already, you know, we're looking at uh, a 39% probability of another 75 basis point hike in September. Um, that could yeah. get us up to around 325 basis points uh, total on the uh, on the Fed funds and you know Fed funds over three we haven't seen that in you know a decade so yeah, I, I more mean, than that's, it. yeah um, that's right it's a, a real change economically yeah all I saw that mortgage rates uh, for a thirty year jumbo has doubled in price in the last six weeks and so that certainly puts a kibosh on your payments if you're buying a new house and that's uh, right. Yeah, I don't know if you follow the price of lumber, Jeff, but you know lumber has gone from fourteen hundred to five sixty-five here in the last six and a half weeks. So evidently, demand for lumber is, of course, it's a small commodity, but it's used in all building. So uh, that must mean something also. But to see that prices drop like that, that's a uh, that's a that's a pretty substantial drop. That means people are not building as much. That's for sure. No, I think there's a link here, clearly. I mean, you know, this mm -hmm. this rise in inflation is going to, you know, bring on a rise in rates. We're going to bring on yeah. uh, a, a demand reaction. And uh, that demand reaction in housing is clearly going to be uh, fewer housing starts. And it's mm -hmm. showing up in lumber, lumber futures, as you're pointing out. Yeah. The next chart that you've got up here is the 10-year Treasury yield. Uh, this is the most amazing chart because there's where the problem lies. Is uh, if this thing really takes off, there's going to be really, really problems over there at the Fed. There, there will be, and uh, you know we've shown you before our target mm -hmm. for six percent on the ten-year Treasury yield, looking out the next twelve to eighteen months. We actually wow. brought it in. We were looking at eighteen to twenty-four months. We now think twelve to eighteen months to get there, and it was predicated on a breakout above. The December 2018 high of three and a quarter. Well, that occurred on Monday. So we broke out, and that breakout to me immediately counts to 362. And so we should see 362 on the 10 year in the very not too distant wow. future. I mean, I, I, it could happen this week even, and I think certainly yeah. within the next few weeks, we'll see 362 on the 10 year. And, you know, a lot of people are thinking, well, we've got this inverted yield curve. That means the Fed's going to have to cut. No, the Fed isn't mm -hmm. going to cut, okay? This is a yeah. real conundrum because we're raising rates into an economic slowdown. And, you know, in my view, we're going to see a parallel yield curve shift where we've got 3% at the Fed funds rate and 6% at the 10-year rate. 
and a steepness of 300 basis points, which is typical, right? That's historically been the spread so that banks can borrow and lend and and make a profit. And, you know, if you change that dramatically, you're going to have a major problem in the banking industry. Yeah, that's for sure. We have a question from one of our listeners, Jeff. And uh, do you see a black swan event that that uh, nobody's looking at that could be out there that would be, uh, you know, trigger these markets to run into a chaotic uh, mode? Well, well, by definition, if I could see it, it wouldn't be a black swan event. (laughs) But, um, you know, let let me put it this way. There's something out there the markets are pricing in, okay? Um, we It might not be obvious to everybody at this point, but there's no question in my mind that something is happening here. And I think the real answer lies in uh, earnings. And, um, you know, uh, we could talk about that. But um, I, I think what will happen is, first of all, we've, we've re-rated equities based on the change in interest rates, right? And so that put a lot of pressure on P.E. Uh, ratios. But we haven't re-rated equities based on earnings. Earnings estimates are still uh, 228 this year and 251 next year. I don't think we're going to come anywhere close to either of those numbers. Yeah. By the way, that uh, question came from an unknown listener in Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> it was me, Jeff. I just was. I try to think. I try to think out what could possibly happen. You know, it'd be, you know, uh, to me, a, a swan event would be something not, you know, we had that with COVID. That was certainly a black swan event. Right. Nobody saw that coming. But, you know, something else could be Taiwan and China. You know, it could yeah. be escalation, you know, or nuclear stuff. I don't know what it would be. But the, the way the, these markets are acting, uh, you can, well, we'll go into cryptos a little later. But let's talk about that. we got a break coming up here in a minute. We're going to talk about the economy already being in a recession. And we're seeing that in Tucson, Arizona. I can tell you that right now. Well, wait till rates back up to three and a quarter percent. Then you'll see a yeah. real recession. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, we're sucking the life out of the economy by raising rates, you know, and that's that's the real issue here. And, you know, as we continue to do so, uh, then I think we'll see GDP growth continue to edge lower. And so it's required. The Fed has to do this. Otherwise, this runaway inflation will, um, you know, uh, crush uh, GDP growth eventually at the nominal level. But real GDP growth is trending sub one percent. And we're going to get a series of data points later this week that I think will bring it down to sub-zero. And that would be, you know, two quarters of negative GDP consecutively. And that's basically a rule of thumb recession right there. So we may already be in a recession. Okay, we'll be right back with Jeff. Huge Alpha Insights Hope. We'll be right back. Just give us two more minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, uh, one of the premier technical newsletter writers that I've been able to fortunate to meet and of course we have some great ones in here with uh, Tim Boss and Shane Smolian but golly you're right at the top in my book buddy you, you cover stuff that uh, way beyond my pay grade that people really need to look at you want to talk to us about what you're seeing in earnings yeah you know the revisions so far uh, have uh, been trending lower for about the last year Larry and, and what I mean by that is that uh, uh, revisions when uh, analysts look at companies forecast and they're they're predicting the earnings for next year they've been cutting earnings pretty regularly on a net basis so we're looking at a chart here of earnings breadth and that's the difference between upside earnings revisions and downside earnings revisions and you can see that the upside earnings revisions uh, are de minimis at this point they're being overwhelmed by downside earnings revisions when this goes negative that uh, is a, a sign of trouble for the market. And like I said a minute ago, you know, we're looking, um, the, the market is pricing in 228 in S&P operating earnings for this year. I would, I mean, there's no way we're going to hit that. We came at 47 bucks in the first quarter, okay? Uh, earnings aren't getting better going forward. I think they're going to get worse. So I'd be very surprised if we come in above, um, if we come in above $200 this year. And for 2023, I think the number will be lower because, again, we are sucking the life out of the economy when we're raising interest rates like this. Um, this is going to put the kibosh on economic growth, both nominally and in a real uh, sense. Okay, the next uh, slide we have is a uh, slide is with investor sentiment. Uh, you want to tell the folks what you're looking at here? Yeah, so, you know, our friend Callum Thomas at Top Down Charts uh, put together this slide, and he came up with this, this great um, um, aggregated survey data. So he's looking at surveys from individual investors, professional investors, futures traders, and the blue line is really looking at all of that aggregated survey data. And what we're looking at is, is the, the attitudes among traders of every ilk have rarely been lower than they are today. But if you look at the black line, which is the combined portfolio allocations of all of these traders, they've rarely been higher. So even though uh, people's attitudes are bearish, their actions have not followed through yet. And so mm -hmm. they continue to sit with this kind of hope hope, uh, and, and prayer that the market's gonna come back and the Fed's gonna bail us out, but the Fed is doing exactly the opposite raising rates into an economic slowdown, forcing recession, pulling the air out of the economy. And that'll result in massive earnings revisions to the downside. And eventually, fundamental investors will have to re-rate equities based on these lower earnings. And I think that will cause the black line to converge with the blue line at much lower levels. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, I, I, Jeff, I have a question. We have a couple more slides to go, but are you going to cover the cryptos at all? Yeah. 
Oh, good, good. You, let's go ahead and uh, you would talk about this major top formation that you've been telling us since the uh, middle of January that <laughs> even a third grader can sort of see it now. But uh, what are you looking at here, my friend? Yeah, I mean, the major top is this. We've got a you know classic pattern top formation of the head and shoulders variety. There's a weak right shoulder, which suggests a much lower downside target to around 3,500 on the S&P. Uh, we've broken both trend and chart support. We've broken moving average support. Uh, we've broken the 38.2% retracement. Uh, and now we're on track to hit the 50% retracement, which coincides with the 200-week moving average and prior chart support uh, at uh, about 3,500 on the S&P. Uh, today, we're sitting at about 3,775 or so. So there's substantial downside. And my biggest fear, Larry, is that this level doesn't hold. Uh, everyone... Mm -hmm who's looking at it thinks it's going to hold. And when you get a lot of people thinking one thing, usually something else happens. And my <laughs> suspicion is that we're going to cut through that level uh, like a hot knife through yeah. butter. And the next support level would then be around 3,200, which is the 61.8% mm -hmm. retracement. Okay, now we'll get on to the cryptos. Uh, I guess the scaled down buying programs these people have been using is not coming to the uh, preceded effect, I guess, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, we downgraded yesterday afternoon at uh, about uh, 2 o'clock central time and sent this uh, a note similar to this out to all of our subscribers, letting them know that, you know, we have seen some substantial damage. Uh, you know, it, actually, uh, on June 1st, when we published our monthly review and outlook, we were very close to downgrading Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. We've been neutral on them for many, many months, all year long, as a matter of fact, which means we have no position. But we now think that we can short these and make a lot of money. And the reason we think so is because they've broken structural trend support as well as key chart supports as well. And, and I think a breakthrough, this 21, 20,000 level, counts down to around 12,500 and possibly as low as 7,500. And uh, if we think Whoa. about it from that perspective, you can make a lot of money. Uh, you know, if you're short at 21,000 and it goes to 10,000, you're going to double your money. Um, with Ethereum, the situation's not that much different, but the target, the numbers are different. We're at about 1,100 today. Uh, again, we think this can go down to 400 at least and possibly as low as three, I'm sorry, 275. And so, you know, our view is uh, you want to be out of these things, and that's been our view for the last six months, but we think. You can now short these things and make a good deal of money. And so we would be looking for opportunities, uh, you know, uh, selling the rallies on uh, any sort of a rally we see in crypto names mm. like Ethereum and Bitcoin. And we choose to use the futures contracts because they're very liquid and reliable sure. as opposed to the exchanges. And the reason for that is, Larry, um, we've seen some real um, concerning action in the lending and exchange functions uh, related yes. to all of these cryptos that suggest that there are some deep-seated structural is issues of yeah. a systemic it's nature in this market yeah. that may make the entire thing to break down. And to your point about a, a black swan earlier, that might very well be it. This market went from yeah. three trillion in size to one trillion, and you suck yeah. that last trillion dollars out of the market, and you're going to have a big problem. Yeah, I know. It was really amazing to see how these things are broken. People, oh, we've got a, a caller on the line. Is that correct, Al? I guess not. Anyway, the, the I understand that some of the these exchanges have even shut down and that they're not even allowing people to withdraw their money. And that's not a good sign. And not only that, they don't even allow to take orders on some of these things. So it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty nasty. There's a run on how the about, bank, basically, in crypto. Yeah. How about the long value versus the uh, the short growth uh, scenarios, Jeff? I, I think I think this is the only place to hide in this market. I mean, um, there is a real nice relationship that's developed over many many years, and that is uh, the black line here is the ratio of value stocks to growth stocks, and they were in a downtrend for 15 years, and the red line represents the 10-year Treasury yield, which was also in a downtrend. But as the 10-year mm -hmm. Treasury yield started to recover and break out, 
so did value stocks relative to growth stocks. And there's about a 90% uh, correlation coefficient right here. So I think as long as rates remain elevated and continue to go higher, we could see value continue to outperform growth and being long value and short growth could be an absolute return strategy that pays off. Hey, Jeff, can you stay with us to the very end so we can tell the folks how they can reach you? Absolutely. We'll be right back, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Okay, we're back, folks, with Jeff Hughes. Jeff, you want to tell the folks how they can reach you? Absolutely. You can always follow me on Twitter at alpha underscore insights. But uh, one way you can find out uh, more about me is to go to my website at www.jwhinvestment.com. And on the website, you'll see that we have a free newsletter. Uh, the most recent one was published on June 1st, where I laid out in detail Basically, everything I told you today, but with a lot more uh, uh, detail and, and charts and narrative. Uh, and you can subscribe to that uh, newsletter, so it's delivered to your email inbox uh, every month when we publish. And actually, there's, uh, there's uh, some perks for members. If you become a member, you'll actually get our top trade idea each week. We publish every Wednesday afternoon, so we're going to put one out this afternoon about 2 o'clock Central Time. And if you become a member, it costs like 10 bucks a month and you can cancel any time. But uh, basically, you get our best idea for about the cost of a cup of coffee each week. And, um, you know, we've, we've done well. We've made people a lot of money with this uh, service. So uh, it might be something your listeners can benefit from. Well, you've done a great job, Jeff. I can attest to that. So thanks for joining us, my friend. And we'll have you on again soon. And keep up the great work and stay on the green side of the grass and be happy. 
Thanks, Larry. You too. I really appreciate you having me on the show today. Well, it's a, it's a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, folks. Uh, by the way, I want to make make a correction uh, on the, the part about the 1,200-point move in the Dow. The question was, could it be 1,200 points to the upside? The answer to that is no, because the overall trend is down. That's the answer to that. So I, I certainly hope that uh, that helps answer uh, that question. So we'll watch that very closely. Now, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes or one minute left to go. Tomorrow, our guest uh, will be uh, Shane Smolian on Friday. We are going to have uh, Tim Bost. So hopefully these and, and Monday, I didn't realize this, folks. I, I, I must not be a very good American. But when I I didn't know anything about Juneteenth, I didn't know there was a holiday for June uh, Juneteenth, and uh, happens to be my dad's birthday. But for heaven's sakes, it surprised the heck out of me. I must be missing something. We'll be right back, folks. Tomorrow, may God. Bless you. 